What's up everyone, welcome back to my channel. So you want to know how to start an import export business in Saudi Arabia? Well, you are in luck because in today's video, we are going to cover that. In fact, we are going to find answer to those questions. So is that a potential market for your export business? What are Saudi's high potential import and export products? How to export to Saudi Arabia and how to import from there? How to find customers and what is the right way to start a business in Saudi Arabia. All these and other important questions we will handle in this video will help you start and grow your own international trade business and start exporting to Saudi Arabia. And also they will give you many business ideas related to Saudi Arabia. Starting an export or import business with Saudi Arabia can be exciting and rewarding. The countries of the Middle East region have huge financial potential and high purchase power thanks to the oil. But most most of them lack other natural resources and arable land. This is the reason there is a demand for imported agricultural products, food, consumer goods, vehicles and machinery. Saudi Arabia imports such goods in a considerable volume. So my friends, if you have these types of goods for exporting and want to learn how to export to Saudi Arabia, you keep watching. All right, guys, let me explain the Saudi Arabian trade and economy first. First of all, it's important to keep in mind this country is a Muslim country. The halal industry which provides standards, compliant products and services for Muslims has become an essential industry with great potential and continues to grow in the region especially in Saudi Arabia. Besides the import demand in Saudi Arabia is relatively high compared to other countries in Gulf region due to the, its large population. It is considered a good opportunity for businesses looking to invest and find new export markets. Saudi Arabia occupies a large area of Arabian Peninsula and has coastlines on the Red Sea, the Indian Ocean and Persian Gulf. It is the only country with a coastline on both the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf. Saudi Arabia administratively is divided into 13 provinces and cities and it is capital Riyadh. It is the largest economy in the Gulf region. This country is also one of the largest oil and gas producing and exporting countries in the world. Saudi Arabia's main resource is oil, with reserves of more than 265 barrels, accounting for more than 16% and second in the world. Saudi Arabia imports mainly food, chemicals, machinery and consumer goods. With most of the essential consumer goods such as rice, sugar, tea, coffee, meat and poultry are tax-free. However, it implements a policy of free trade concerning commodities which is highly depend on competitive prices, quality of goods and delivery on time. So this is a competitive market. Thanks to the oil and gas reserves and taking advantage of this factor to develop the oil and gas industry. While the mostly desert terrain is not conducive to the development of agriculture and production. The Arab economy of Saudi Arabia relies heavily on exports of petroleum products and also oil and gas extracts. Now speaking of Saudi Arabian international business and by the way I am starting to share the main export products of Saudi Arabia with you. Saudi Arabia is the world's largest crude oil producer with an output of about 4 billion barrels a year. The great development and prosperity of Saudi Arabia are entirely thanks to the exploitation of the vast reserves of oil and natural gas. In addition, Saudi Arabia also has gas, copper, gold, bauxite. Saudi Arabia's crude oil export in May 2020 was about 6 billion barrels a day, of which exports to the US market are just over 600,000 barrels a day. Decreasing oil production and export means also reducing associated gas output. Gas is used as a feedstock in the petrochemical industry and for electricity generation. Saudi Arabia ranks first among the countries exporting LLDPE to China with 38,650 tons. The top three polymer exporting countries in 2021 to China are Saudi Arabia, South Korea and Taiwan. Compared to the same period in 2018, China's total polymer imports from Saudi Arabia increased by about 30% and 7% for imported from South Korea and Taiwan. Taiwan in 2019. Okay friends, now let's look at the main import products of Saudi Arabia together. 
The natural conditions are not favorable for the development of agriculture. So Saudi Arabia has to import agricultural products to serve the domestic consumption demand. Saudi Arabia is the largest rice importing among the GCC countries with an import value of 1.67 billion United States dollars in 2014, equivalent to 1.4 million tons. The largest rice supplying countries are India and Pakistan, mainly by Materialized prices range from 900 to 1,700 US dollar per ton. Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates are the two largest rice importers among the Gulf countries. The value of Saudi Arabia's rice imports from India and Pakistan accounts for 90% of Saudi rice imports. This can mean a great business opportunity for Indians and Pakistanians. Saudi Arabia has the large food deficit in the region and is importing 7% of food and foodstuffs. Therefore, food security is a problem in these countries. It means that this country will continue to depend on seafood and seafood imports and gradually reduces exports to focus on domestic consumption. Saudi Arabia and Iraq are the most potential seafood markets. Seafood prices in the Arab region are rising, growing the rising domestic consumption. This is an opportunity opportunity for seafood exporting businesses in nearby countries which want to raise their export. The habit of drinking tea and coffee is rising globally. In 2020, Saudi Arabia imported about 60,000 tons of tea and 220,000 tons of coffee. The main supplier of coffee is Brazil. But this can also mean a great opportunity for other coffee and tea countries like Vietnam, Indonesia, India, Malaysia and African countries. Because the country produces and processes a lot of oil and oil-based products and chemicals, then there are a lot of processing plants. A big volume of special equipment and machinery is being imported for these plants. The machinery includes, for example, pumps, valves, spatial reactors, columns, boilers, high-tech apparatus, monitoring devices, etc. This kind of equipment is expensive and it is a lucrative export business for manufacturers and trading companies companies in China, India and Europe. On the other hand, it is not easy to access the right purchase contacts for such equipment. The end users of such equipments and goods are often large state-owned companies like Saudi Aramco. That's why to export such equipment to Saudi Arabia, you should have local agents who can help to reach the right contacts and do the local marketing for you. All right, let's move on to the new part, which will help you to understand how to start exporting to Saudi Arabia clearly step by step. The export process and documentation consist of many steps which are closely related to each other. Therefore, to successfully export to Saudi Arabia by sea or air, you need to understand the process and documentation in each step. And the first step is negotiate and sign a contract. After you have got a customer who is ready and interested in the order, you need to negotiate with customers and finally sign a foreign trade contract for export the shipment. This is an order stage. When communicating and negotiating with the Saudis, you must know that they are excellent traders and negotiators. They bargain everywhere and in all aspects of trade, whether at the store or in the negotiation room, make the decision slowly. The negotiation procedure with Saudis can be somewhat bureaucratic and slow. Do not use high pressure tactics as it will backfire and can lead to the rejection of ordering from you. At the end of these steps, you should have the sales purchase order contract signed with the importer from Saudi Arabia. You should also provide a pro forma invoice for the importer. I suggest you want at least 20% of advance payment after the order has been signed. Now let's move on to the second step that is apply for an export license. The export license is allowing your country's goods and services traded with other countries. An export permit is a document related to a specific specific good exported or imported by various routes. If you do not have an export license, you can go to your country's authority to apply for it. Depending on the regulations of each country, some products do not need an export license. Also in some countries, there is even no need to apply for an export license. For example, in most European countries, there are such requirements. Also important to bear in mind for exporting, the original sets of documents must be enclosed with the transaction 
translation into Arabic if required. Certain products such as antiques, animals, or ancillary products require special export licenses and permits. Here is step 3. Book and get an empty container. Booking is an exporter making a reservation with an international shipping line or forwarding company. Booking is an easy job. It is crucial to choose a good shipping company and book early to timely transport goods. Definitely ask for offers from many different service providers to see which one can give you the best prices and conditions. Sometimes even no need to book a full container. So we come to step 4 and that is preparing and checking the export goods. After the order has been signed and advance payments received, you need to plan the delivery. Need to produce or outsource goods accurate to the quantity and quality promised in the contract. Before shipment, you should carefully check all the information that I mentioned. The goods need a permit for export. Is cargo allowed to unload at the port of destination? Although the buyer places an order regarding the delivery, there can be some extra costs. You shall agree on all with the customer. Is your product dangerous? Do you have an MSTCS? Is the packing list correct or not? Does the net weight match? If you ship an out of gauge, you need to ensure that you have an export license. Make sure that the words are correct in every document when exporting any shipment. Mistakes of documents can waste lots of money and time. Does the customer needs a certificate of origin? Okay, let's look at step 5, package and shipping marking. I'm telling you a few things to keep in mind when packing. Shipment must have an origin, certificate of origin. The items must be packed carefully and ensure safety. The shipping address is clearly stated. Each box, carton, pallet, the container shall be numbered and the numbers shall be presented in the packing list with the description of the goods. Make sure all match. Don't ship the goods without receiving the balance payment. The Saudi Customs Office requires that commercial invoice issued by the exporter include an accurate description of the goods exported to Saudi Arabia specifically. For equipment, model number, brand, manufacturer's full name, etc. For other goods, description of the material, manufacturer's full name, brand, etc. Regarding the bill of lading, three copies are required with signatures. The documents must have the vessel name and shipping date and the full address of manufacturer or exporter. Items shipped to Saudi Arabia, origin of each item and components indicated. The description of the goods includes a list of ingredients and origin of each package. The signed declaration shows the information is accurate. We are starting to talk about step 6 and that is buying shipment insurance. Single insurance is a document issued by the insurer to the assured. Certification for a covered shipment helping to address the risks that may occur in international transport. Solving part of damage discharge in sea transport because insurance is a form of dispersing risk according to the community principles. It's a necessary document to lodge and receive insurance indemnity upon disputes or litigation. The exporters provides insurance certificates to the importer along with the other export documentation. The certificate must include actual insurance amount, description and value of insured goods, ship name, the port of loading, Saudi Arabia's port of discharge and address. And the last step is doing custom procedures for importers. The other steps are the documentation that the Saudi Arabia importer must present to the customs to clear the custom. It is normally the responsibility of the importer but the exporter must provide the full set of required documentation to the importer. Customs documentation for Saudi customs includes the things. Letter of the introduction of the company. Customs declaration. Commercial invoice one copy. Bill of lading one copy with the enterprise's seal. Shipping carrier's seal. International freight bill. CIC surcharge. Hygen document fee one copy. Certificate of origin one original if any. Certificate of specialized inspection if goods are subjected to inspection one original with the certification of the specialized agency. Other documents if any depending on the type of goods. A copy of quality certificate. Certificate of analysis health certificate. Besides you should also prepare a copy of other documents for reference or presentation when needed. Foreign trade contract, packing list and relevant documents such as catalogs, photos and technical documents of the shipment. Okay my friends we learned how to export to Saudi Arabia and now we need to talk about how to start a low cost export import business in Saudi Arabia. So let's get
get started. It is not easy to do international business in Saudi Arabia when you do not have enough budget to spend an inventory. Many people are looking for a low cost business that can bring high efficiency and ease to do. Usually the less capital you invest, the less risk you will face. In today's digital world, the internet makes everything cheaper and easier. In this video, I'm giving an introduction to the two possible ways how to start an international business with low investment. Both ways are different in nature and for sure, if one way is suitable for one person, it might not be suitable for another person. Okay, the first way to start an online export-import business. Step 1. Create a website. To facilitate your business, first of all, you must prepare your business plan and strategy accordingly. Before making a business plan, one should conclude exhaustive market research, collect important information, analyze and make conclusions. Only after you have enough information, you can discover the opportunities and potential products and based on this, you can start planning your business. All elements of business, including the website or online shop, should be accurate to your plan. If you plan to export or sell to Arabia, you should translate the language to Arabic. The pictures and illustrations should be suitable for local people and accurate to the local culture. With my experience many years, I recommend using WordPress because it is a user-friendly software. You can learn once and create many types of websites that are quite flexible and easy to edit. Using WordPress, you can create a high-quality sales website or online store. Step 2. Marketing for your products. To actually sell and get orders, you must promote the products to those who need them. You can try online advertising and marketing channels like Facebook advertising, Google advertising, SEO, marketing by blog, email marketing, YouTube marketing, and advertising. If using an advertising service must depends on how well you target and how appealing is the marketing message. It is possible to lose a lot of money. If you target wrongly or if you use an unprofessional advertising company, sometimes also not effective if you do marketing yourself. It can take a while before you learn to do it properly. You should consider and set out of specific plan before starting to do online marketing. If you are starting it the first time, I suggest using a help of professional or using a professional marketing agency. And lastly, step three, choosing a shipping method. After receiving orders from customers, you need to proceed with the delivery. Today, there are many shipping services you can choose to ensure your customers receive goods quickly and conveniently. Also, some manufacturers can provide you with a drop shipping service. So now you can own a business without having to spend too much capital. What you need to do is learn to improve your skills and make your business more professional. Now we are start to check out the second way of doing international business in Saudi Arabia and that is to become an agent of Saudi Arabia's import-export companies. If you are a person with business knowledge and excellent sales skills in this field but you don't have enough capital to open a company then being a partner with companies is for you. Many import and export companies want to find people who can help them find a source of goods or international customers and if you can help them make big deals the commission you receive will be high. Earning commission all depends on how you can close the deals well and fastly. It depends on your knowledge, ability to communicate and self-study. Anyways guys, Saudi Arabia is an economic center of the Middle East with a long history and is also home to many corporate headquarters. The country has a different culture from the rest of Asia and the West and it is a Muslim country. On the other hand, because of the wealthy population and the fact that there is not enough arable land, there is a huge opportunity to export especially food and natural products to Saudi Arabia. Demand is also for machinery and equipment, technology for the enormous oil and gas industry in Saudi Arabia. I advise starting with research, creating local connections and visiting local interesting trade fairs before making plans of exporting to Saudi Arabia. Anyways guys, I hope that this video helped you see how you can start an export-import business in Saudi Arabia. And again, comment the keyword export to Saudi Arabia in the comment section so I know you got to this point. And if you want to be part of my success story on YouTube, do not forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you want more videos around international trade business and global marketing, then make sure to click these two videos that I have right here as well I promise they will not disappoint. As always guys, I appreciate you and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.